Um, I've got in front of me uh, the drawing that I did. I've got this watercolor kit, which I'm going to get out for you guys in a second. Just have to switch this camera view a little bit so you guys can see the kit. All right, I've got a tub of water. I've got a brush, two brushes. I've got a large brush and a small brush, okay, depending on, you know, what area I'm working on. And I've got a paper towel. So those are the supplies that I've got. All right, so technique one is just mixing colors. So how do you mix colors? How do you mix colors in a, in a kit like this? With water. With water, yes. What else? What else can you do, or, or how else can you uh, mix colors here? So there's like a tray. Yeah, them. exactly. There's a tray. So this this style of kit has um, a hinged tray, which is the cover. So you're gonna mix your you're gonna mix your colors in the tray. So um, this kit has eight colors. So uh, eight basic colors. So if you're mixing a color, like I, there's an orange in the tray, but if I want to mix my own orange. I'm going to mix it here in the tray. Can you guys see that on the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's technique one, is just mixing colors. Spend some time just uh, mixing some colors in the tray, adding water, seeing how much water you need, how much of the paint you need. So that's technique one, is just mixing. Technique two is just called flat wash. Flat wash just means that you're applying color evenly to an area. And it's important with the flat wash that you do the whole area at once. Because with watercolor, if you go back to an area once the paint has dried and you add more, then um, it sort of messes up the first uh, marks that you made. So you have to do the flat wash all in one go. So make sure you have enough paint to fill in that shape and then try to fill in evenly like that. All right, that's flat wash. If you start to see that it's starting to pool a little bit, just take the brush, try to move it around. but. Once it's dry, you don't want to go back and, and, and touch it up because it'll, like, what happens is the new area makes the old paint kind of run, and you can see that, uh, that boundary. All right. Technique three is called gradient. So what's a, we covered gradients before. What's a gradient, you guys? From color to color, from light to darker. Good. Yeah, good. That's perfect. Yep, a shift from one color to another or from light to dark. So the one I'm going to do here is a one color gradient, which is light to dark. Um, and I need a good... All right, so I'll do this big... I'll do this large one here because it gives me plenty of space. So as I do... As I do this, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to start to rinse the color out of my brush and then add water as I move down through the shape. So by the time I get to the end, it's pretty much transparent. I don't have any, almost, I, don't, I almost have no color in the, um, in the brush. See how that works? If the top part of it's not dark enough, you can go back while it's still wet. While the top part of it is still wet, you can add, you can go back and you can add in a little bit more like if it, you didn't get enough um, saturation the first time, you can go back and you can carefully add that in. You have to be careful, though, to um, keep the gradient smooth. For um, If you want to make it more complicated, you can do a two-color gradient. You can blend one color into another if you want to try that. All right, this one's just called one-color gradient. All right, and the last one is called lifting and blotting. So lifting and blotting is where you use a paper towel to create some effects. So again, I need a pretty big shape to show this. So I'll do, I'll do this top right-hand corner and I'll use a different color. This works the best with darker colors. It's okay with lighter colors, but it's not great. So the way lifting and blotting works is you fill your shape with a flat wash.
Okay, so you start with a flat wash like that. And then with a clean brush and some clean water. Well, this water is not clean, but I'm not going to take the time to change out your water. You should change out your water from time to time. So with a clean brush, what I'm going to do now, so I'm going to do the lifting part first, and then I'm going to do the blotting part. So the lifting part is where you take the brush and you kind of brush the, the, the um, you brush it across the area you just did. Can you guys see those little like bubbles that are forming? Yeah. Okay, so there's some little like where the clean water hits the page, it starts to push the watercolor around and it starts to kind of bubble it up. So that's the lifting part. And then the blotting part is with the paper towel. And you can see that it starts to get lighter. Those little bubbles start to get lighter the more the water starts to spread. And then with the blotting, what you do is you just carefully, you got to do this really gently, but you press down and it sort of picks up those spots. And you can create some effects with that. So this is good for like, if you're trying to do some textures, you're trying to do like clouds, or like um, you're trying to do like wrinkles on cloth or something like that, this can be a good technique. It works a little bit better when the watercolor, the flat wash is like almost dry. I kind of did it when it was a little bit too wet. So it's best for the flat wash if you wait like 30 seconds or so and then you do the lifting. 